here we are in the city. And it's a terrible day today. It's wet, cold, and about 12 degrees. And today, I want to talk about the Ronanes. And how excited I am about it. I know a lot of people, a lot of influencers uh, online already have them. For us mere mortals, uh, I'm told it's at least a month. Sometime in July. Sometimes in Australia, uh, we get things pretty late in the piece. So, uh, yeah. Let's talk about the Ronan S and how that's changing things from uh, from when I started photography 29 years ago to now and how much that really affects the price point, the entry point, the quality of the gear, the things that you can do. It's a little bit of a history lesson as well as a little bit of an excitement about this great new product. So this is what normal walking looks like without me really trying to stabilize using a lens that is stabilized and a body that's not. And I'm at 24 mil, so 24 mil is obviously a helpful place to be to, uh, to iron out the kinks. Just take a shortcut through here it'll be considerably warmer. Why is the Ronin S so epic? If you go back to The Shining, one of the first films to ever use a Steadicam by Stanley Kubrick, this was a massive change in how filmmaking was done. And basically, what used to cost a million dollars, you can now put a red camera on it, which is a cinematic quality camera. And for a thousand dollars Australian, 699, I think it is US, you can have the equivalent, absolutely astounding. And that level of quality in the hands of us everyday filmmakers, ridiculous, ridiculous. Now we hear it's heavy, I've been holding this camera up for about three or four minutes and yeah my arm single-handedly is starting to get tired but that's when you vlog in and I don't really think the Ronin S is primarily for vlogging it's for amazing filmmaking I'm gonna get some lunch What we're doing is putting uh, really professional grade uh, Steadicam capabilities, stabilization capabilities, literally in the hands of everybody at that price point. We know we can put uh, cameras up to about three and a half kilograms on there, which pretty much covers almost every camera I have. And we know that we're gonna have focus, uh, focus pulling the ability to focus manually from a thumb controller uh, on the hand grip. So this is astonishing. And I, the applications for it are absolutely endless. The size means you can use it anywhere. The price means anyone can use it. It lasts all day long on one charge. I'm sure if it's got really heavy loads, it probably doesn't last that long, but this is amazing stuff. I know we've had things like this before from other companies, and of course there are other Ronins from DJI, but it's the size and the price point and the build quality, which at this stage from what everybody says is amazing, that, it, that is gonna make this game changing in this category from my perspective. You know, of the DJI products, 
I've got a Phantom 4 Pro Plus. I've got a Spark. Bought it just before the Air came out. St still, I'm still sad about that. Uh, but I have the often not talked about and highly underrated from my perspective uh, original Osmo. So not the Osmo Mobile, not the Osmo Plus, the original Osmo, which was a 4K fixed lens uh, stabilized in the same way with a gimbal uh, camera. And it blows my mind. I got it about two years ago and it blew my, mi blew my mind how we could get stable shots doing all sorts of things. And uh, a film I made uh, a couple of months ago was, all, was mostly shot on that. And here's a little bit of the footage here. It's a beautiful product. It was very well made. It was, it's was it been very reliable. Had a few issues, but it, you know, it felt a little bit like a first gen, which it was, because they've already got the replacement out. You know, the uh, sound recording was bad. And before we did the firmware update, the, the fans on the thing ran like crazy. But, but the idea was brilliant. And I, I feel that DJI have uh, now got a lot of experience with uh, gimbals, like all sorts of gimbals. And all of that experience from drone gimbals and the gimbals they make for cameras is being applied into this handheld unit, which is accessible to everybody and is gonna absolutely change the quality of what you can do. And things like uh, the, the time-lapse tracking and so on in this form factor, the fact that you've got the built-in tripod at the bottom. You know, all this stuff is really, really well thought out for the filmmaker on the fly. And for that price point, thousand odd dollars here and six ninety nine in the States, it blows my mind. Look, I've been doing this a long time, long enough to know when this stuff was not only beyond the reach of normal people, but these, these, this type of equipment cost as much as a house. You know, having the best quality recording on a video camera back in the 90s was something called an SP beta cam made by Sony. And they cost one, $200,000, the cost of a house back then. And now we can do this, something similar for a couple of thousand dollars. And it was the same with stabilization absolutely expensive, absolutely specialized. I'm blown away. I know this is the first generation of this type from DJI. It's beautifully built. It's firmware one. And uh, we are all, we are all going to get to enjoy this so, so much. I can't wait. I can't wait to get my hands on it. My whole, something I may not have talked about on this channel before is, is my first passion when I was a teenager was filmmaking and photography was my second passion. And I realized that filmmaking, because back in the eighties, it was ridiculously expensive, was something that you needed a team of people to do and it just cost too much. So I, I took up my second, my second passion, which was, yeah, the difference between them was tiny, which was photography. But now with all the tools we now have at our hands, Filmmaking is very accessible and just that reason alone, just that capacity for it to activate you and me to chase our dreams at such a ridiculously low price point is what excites me so much. And the rest of it, the quality of it, the robustness of it, how long it lasts, all of that seems to be there. I just can't wait to see what the future holds. It's so exciting. So. I'd love to hear what you think about the Ronin S, what you think about stabilized cameras, what you think about the price point. You know, how much do you want to use these sorts of things? And yeah, it's so exciting. Anyway, I'll hopefully have one in maybe four or five weeks, it's looking like. So please, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. And of course, please share because it makes us all smarter and we need that. We need that. And, uh, and thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one and have a great week. And I look forward to hearing from you. Please tell me about the Ronin S. I just think it's such a big ga game changer. It's not, this is not a bandwagon thing. Filmmaking has been my 
number one passion my whole life for 35 years and I'm so pumped. I've always loved Steadicam from when I first saw them in the mid to late 70s, early 80s. So this is just all the dreams coming together and we can do it. <sighs> See ya. Oh, oh, oh.